Hi folks, Carl Richens here, coordinator of football officials for the Big Sky Conference. For the past two seasons, our conference has been officiating games without umpire in the offensive backfield, basically lined up in the same position where you would see the center judge in games officiated with eight officials. We obviously had to adjust our mechanics to move the umpire to the offensive backfield, while at the same time remaining with seven officials. However, it is a change we feel has been very positive and we are very pleased with the results. Let me be clear. This was in no way an attempt to undermine the current eight-person mechanics, nor was it an attempt to delay our efforts to one day move to the eight-person mechanics. This was simply a financial decision made by our conference. At that time, and certainly not now, the Big Sky Conference athletic directors and head coaches were not in a financial position to provide for an additional game fee for each of their home games simply to accommodate the center judge. Having worked on the National Eight-Person Mechanics Committee, I saw firsthand the value of center judge. With moving the umpire to the offensive backfield, our hope was to take the benefits of a center judge used in the college game and morph it with the NFL, who has their umpire, on the op their umpire in the offensive backfield, and determining if perhaps we could come up with a prototype. It may not be the best situation, but it is one we feel is very effective and has been well received by our coaches. This is how we developed the mechanic. We had a meeting with our referees and umpires and we took the seven person and eight person mechanics manuals and went through the two sections sentence by sentence and came up with this prototype. We also consulted and collaborated with some NFL officials to develop this mechanic. As expected, after the first year, we needed to make some small adjustments. But now after two seasons, we feel we have a mechanic that is in good working order. Like all mechanics and evolutions in the game, we will always be making minor tweaks and adjustments. Here are some takeaways we discovered which you should probably consider before making this change. The umpire is going to run, and run a lot. That is how the center judge position was originally designed due to the number of hurry-up offenses used in the college game and the need to get the ball in position in a safe and timely manner. Number two, you can expect a noticeable learning curve. It is easier to teach something new to someone than it is to unteach something, or in other words, break old habits. The biggest change and where the habits needed to be untaught mostly were the referee and the umpire. Number three, we found the revamped ball mechanics similar to the NFL's mechanic extremely effective and allowed for us to get the ball placed in position more efficiently and timely. Number four, the referee will be more involved in ball mechanics, not necessarily spotting the ball on the ground, that varies from referee to referee, but even if the referee doesn't spot the ball, they will need to be more involved. Number five, because the referee is more involved in ball mechanics, the deep wing officials and line of scrimmage officials need to take more active role in a substitution process, which we found they could easily do as they are not distracted as they, by much handling the ball. Number six, Having O2O communication is critical. This allows all the officials on the crew to assist the referee and communicate the evolving substitution process. And number seven, once the umpires get more accustomed to the new position, they will find themselves remaining stationary and officiating rather than being concerned about avoiding players. Let's take a look at some video and I will try to illustrate some of the bullet point changes when the umpire moves to the offensive backfield. Okay, we have a lot to cover here, so let's just move right down the bullet point sheet. First of all, let's start with free kicks. There is absolutely no change from what we've been doing in the free kicks prior to moving the umpire to the offensive backfield. Uh, umpire lines up in the same position here. We're following the guidelines as set out by the CFO last year where there's zones on the kickoff. Okay, we'll talk now about scrimmage plays before the snap. Okay, you can see that all all the positions except for the umpire are in their normal position. Line of scrimmage officials, deep officials, back judge, referee. The only change is the umpire is not in the defensive backfield. He is lined up in the offensive backfield. Now, where he lines up, how deep, we're not going to regulate that too much. Generally, no less than 10 yards, no more than 15 yards. Keep in mind that umpire has to spot the ball, so he's going to be coming in each time to spot the ball. So the further back he is, the more he has to run. Conversely, the tighter he is in towards the line of scrimmage, the more he'll have to move if there's a sweep to his sideline. Width is determined by where he's out on the field. 
Here, if the quarterback rules to his sideline, he can stand still and let him pass in front of him. Or if there's a sweep to his sideline, he can stand still and let it pass in front of him. If it goes away from him, obviously he has a referee that can cover the field. We tell our referee and our umpire depth, or excuse me, width is best. The better width you have, the better view you have on it. That said, keep in mind, umpire, how much you have to travel at the end of the play. Let's talk about counting players now. No change here. It's a free kick. Referee, head line judge, line judge, all have the uh, receiving team. Umpire, side judge, field judge have the kicking team. Scoring kicks, no, ch no change from what we've been doing all along. You'll notice the umpire is on the defensive side of the ball. Punts, there is a change in the umpire in the offensive backfield. He has no counting responsibilities on, on the punts. So here the referee, head line judge, and line judge would count the kicking team. Side judge, field judge, back judge would have the receiving team. This is just a regular scrimmage down, non-kicking play. Same thing. Headline judge, line judge, referee have offense. Defense is side judge, field judge, back judge. Umpire has no counting responsibilities. Okay, let's talk about the substitution and the substitution process. In the substitution process, the only real change is the umpire. Side judge, field judge, back judge, no change for you. Headline judge, line judge. No change for you. The substitution process here, you can see the referee is out to the cross. So he's initiated the substitution process. The umpire is holding up the snap. As I start the video, you can see now that the offense is not set yet. They're still moving around. So we want to make sure the umpire doesn't, in this position, back out of there by backpedaling because we don't know if that back might step forward and he can't see him and he would collide with him. So he runs while the offense is not set, he runs forward, then he spins once he clears the deepest player so he's in a safe position. You can see here the umpire has his hand on the on the. That's not necessarily something you're required to do or have to do, but the fact that the center is down on the ball lets the center know that, that he's there. And he also has a hand up towards the quarterback so that he knows that we're holding it up for substitution. The referee drops his arms. And now comes the umpire. Take a look at from the end zone view. Notice how the offense is still moving. Umpire spins after he gets out. And notice also that he doesn't turn the opposite way. He turns so he never takes his sight off of the offense. He turns in the direction of the offense. Okay, we're going to see a substitution here where players are coming off the field and on the field. Here the offense is set, and so the umpire is holding up the snap, but he can see his, he takes while the players are coming in and going out, he takes and plans his, quote, escape routes, so he knows where he's going, and because they're set and ready to go, he backpedals out so he can observe the action and doesn't have to concern himself with turning his back to the players and then spinning. Also, this is a very good job by the referee doesn't wait till the last player's off the field. He releases the umpire, giving him time to get out of the way as the last of the players are coming off the field. End zone view, you can see the players coming in and going out. Umpires watch the referee. But at the same time, he glances and see his escape route is set. Because the team is set, he can backpedal out of there safely. Okay, here you're going to see the umpire holding up a punt during the substitution process. The center's back looking to find the, the punter, and that's the, where the ball's going to go, so naturally that'd be the best place for the umpire to be. Has his hand up to the punter, so the punter is not calling out signals, nor the punch shield. He's watching the referee. The referee signals him away, and now he can step into position. Okay, let's talk now about running plays. I'm speaking now primarily to the referee and the umpire. Not a lot of change for the line judge and the headline judge, as they uh, their keys are the same, the deep the deep officials are the same. the The difference here is on the running plays. Right now, the umpire is responsible for the center guard and tackle on his side of the field. The referee has the guard and tackle on his side of the field. That helps the line of scrimmage officials, who in the past have had to watch the tackles depending on the formation. 
Now they know that they have an official, be it the referee and the umpire, who's helping out with their tackles. And therefore, that frees them up more to watch other action during the play. We want the referee and the umpire to take front side point of attack if the play is coming their direction. If it's going away from them, they have the backside action. In the old mechanic with the umpire in the defensive backfield, the referee would be looking through this formation at this tackle. However, now he has this side of the ball, umpire has this side of the ball, and then we let the action of the play determine where we go after the snap. It's a clear design run this way, so immediately the referee will go to the point of attack and he would be looking in this direction. We do not want the umpire looking here because we have action behind the play where he should be watching. Okay, let's look for front side and back side. Okay, front side is here, referee's in here looking, umpire's looking here. First thing we do on the play is notice the formation. Quarterback under center, two backs in the backfield, two receivers to one side, only a tight end to the, to the umpire side. So we know he has help with the uh, tackle, with the uh, line of scrimmage official at the top of the screen. As the play develops, it goes to the umpire side. He stands still. There's no need to get happy feet. Just turn, watch the action, see it's run. Point of attack is here. This is the umpire's eyes here. Referee, this is a habit you have to break because you've always followed that and gone with it. You have to trust your umpire to take that action and you now have to shift your eyes to backside of the play. End zone view. Point of attack is right here. Good job by the umpire to be looking there. Referee, you're looking backside. I want to stop it right here. Notice the ball boy up there in the upper right corner of the screen where he's coming in. The play ends outside the numbers, so we will be getting a new ball. Notice the ball boy's coming in from the offensive side of the uh, back, in the offensive backfield, and we will discuss that more later during ball mechanics. Umpires, if you've never followed the play to your side of the field because you're now in the offensive backfield, it's new to you and it's a challenge at first, but you have to follow the action of a quarterback. This is new for the umpires. Quarterback gets caught, scrambles, now he has to run, umpire goes with him, hesitates there for a minute because we have a loose ball on the ground, but this is the correct way of doing it. You stand still as best you can as you read and recognize the offensive pass rush on your side of the ball. You're watching him loop around. You're looking for that threat to the quarterback. Now you realize you have to go with him, looking for action. Ball's on the ground. You're right there to spot it. Looking at the pass rush, watching the keys, looking at players on your side of the ball, on your side of the ball, meaning the sideline side of the ball. And now you go with the quarterback. First thing we have to do is read the formation. We know it's third down and four yards to go for a first down. The receiver, the defender at the top receiver is in press formation. We want that line of scrimmage to be looking at that. Although that's not his key, he can help the deep wing official if there's a quick hands to the face or action immediately after the snap. The back judge's key is in tight, back behind the right tackle. So he doesn't really have to look at him closely because he knows there's no th immediate threat of a foul and we have referee help there as well. So we want to read pass or run. Back judges, you're helping us out here. If this is a run, we need you to help us with those second level players, the linebackers. Immediately back judge, you read run. Your help should be with those linebackers for second level. Don't worry too much about defensive holding. It's more the fouls against those linebackers. It's a design run all the way. It's an option run. So now umpire, you stay with him and you go with him. Referee, you have backside. 
Your tendency and your habit will be to follow that quarterback. You have to now turn him over to that umpire and watch for backside action. Umpire, you come all the way to the ball. Umpire here, you can see that the player has line of scrimmage coverage by the line of scrimmage official. He's out in space right now. For you to be watching that runner is of no value where you can watch just that action right behind, right directly behind the ball carrier and your head is on a swivel. Another play where we have a quarterback scramble. Just looks like the defensive linemen aren't doing much of a rush. They're just happy to be there and dancing. Now he's flushed from the, from the pocket. Ref or umpire, you go with the player, clear into the bench area. That's your responsibility, go clear into that bench area and bring him out. It's a little easier here because he's going into the, his own bench area. But nevertheless, we want you going in there because we have another player from the other opponent in there. Okay, let's read the formation. We're deep in the, in the minus side of the field. Back judge, your keys are in tight. You're looking for run or pass. If you read pass, you can do that by watching the quarterback, watching the tackles. You read pass. You need to now know where your key is because you picked him out and identified him before the snap. If it's a run, we need help in the middle. It's a good job by the back judge here, noticing the left guard come off and block illegally low against the linebacker. This is what we would expect our back judge to see that and call that. There's the flag you can see right there coming in. Back judges, you know that if it's a run, we need help in the middle because we don't have an umpire there. We need help with uh, second level blocks on those linebackers. Watch the left guard, fires out, low on that linebacker, and the flag comes in. This comes in late because all I have is the TV video. I do not have the coach's video. Let's keep an eye on the center. First of all, recognize formation. The back judge, your key is not, no, no receiver is being threatened at this point. So back judges, we want you to look and help out if it's a run play. If it's a run play and you identify run right away, we need your help identifying if there's action against the second level. You can see here, watch the center. Comes out and blocks illegally low against the linebacker, which was correctly identified and called by the back judge. Right where we want your eyes to be looking to help out on that. Okay, I've put this still shot in here only to illustrate that when we talk about the goal line positioning, nothing changes with alignment. We're all the same as we would normally do in goal line umpire. The only thing here is that we've asked if you can help. Help with forward backward pass, passer beyond the line of scrimmage, and pass touched behind or beyond the line of scrimmage. We still expect our line of scrimmage officials that they need to be good enough even though they're watching the action and they have to get to the goal line, they have to still officiate the play and be able to make that determination of forward backward pass, passer beyond the line of scrimmage, and if the pass was touched behind or beyond the line of scrimmage. However, we are asking umpire to be aware of those and see if he's in a position to help out if necessary. Okay, let's look at some pass plays. It's important to identify what we see. First of all, it's first and 10, the plus side of the field, empty backfield, five receivers split wide. So first of all, we should be reading pass. Referees and umpires, you have an extra key to help you is look at the tackles, how their feet are and how they're back a little bit. This is designed most likely to be a pass. As the play develops, let's look to where you should be looking. Referee your side of the ball, umpire your side of the ball, don't be watching the quarterback until now when the pocket collapsed, then you go in here. Good job by the umpire to go in. You have the, uh, not the forward progress spot, but you have the ruling. So you come in with your hand raised. Again, coverage areas. Watching your side. Once the block pocket collapses, now we should probably have two sets of eyes, referee and umpire, on that hit on the quarterback. 
umpire, you have the ruling, so you'll come in and start the play clock. Okay, let's identify it's first and 20 in this case. Four, it's a double-double. You have four receivers wide. Nobody's in press coverage. Back judge, well, again, we're asking you to help out on that second level. Linebackers are taking a deeper position in this case. Most likely this is a pass. Once we read pass, we go back to our key. Back judge, immediately back to our key. Referee and umpire, you're watching the rush. Immediate first threat comes to, from the referee side. Referee, you're looking at that. Umpire, you don't want to look at it yet. You've still got action on your side. Watching your side of the ball, underneath. Now, referee, you'll go there. Umpire, you will turn your head as the contact occurs. That's a difficult task, and that's something that you'll get the feel for. You'll watch players, and then you'll feel when there's going to be a collapse on the quarterback and take your eyes there. You can see things sometimes that the referee can't see. Again, this is a difficult rush. This is one that takes time to learn. Referee, you're watching that outside rush all the way. Don't have to worry about the offside tackle that you've had to in the past. Umpire, you're walk looking at the rush on your side, and you should stay with that. Referee's got that hit on the quarterback. You might glance there right when the contact occurs. Okay, we're going to see a roughing the passer and targeting call here made by the umpire. He correctly goes to the action on the, he's watching his rush on the outside, stays with that rush, and can see he breaks three. And we have a forearm to the head and neck area of the quarterback. Now you'll notice the action, and I'll slow it down here, is right directly straight lined in front of the referee. Referee did not see this action. He saw action, but not specifically see the action. And this is a reason why we like our umpire in this position. He can help out, see that action, and make the appropriate call for roughing the passer with targeting. We have two end zone views, one from this angle. Exactly where the umpire to be looking, and one from this angle. It's really quick, but you can see that forearm, and the umpire is in perfect position to see that. From that angle. Another example of targeting called by the umpire because in the right angle to see it. The transition here for referee is it's a run play so he's going to go transition to the point of attack on a run. Umpire stays with it behind it and sees the helmet I can clearly see why the referee would transition off of this and go to point of attack. Umpire can see the dip of the head and the crown to the quarterback. Okay, let's look at punts. Positioning. Remember, we talked about this earlier. You're in position to prevent the snap. You stand in the gap where the ball will be snapped, halfway between the punter and the center. That gives you enough time to escape and get out to your position. You're not right up underneath the center. Gives you time. And they won't snap the ball as long as you're there holding it up with the punter. Again, once they're in formation, there's no change to anybody here. Headline judge, line judge, you'll do the same thing. Referee, same thing. Deep official, same thing. The only change here is umpire. You are now in the offensive backfield, and you probably and the, I, we want you lined up just outside the tight end and even with the kicker. Also, umpires, new this year in 2020, you need to make sure, especially when you're holding up the snap, that you're looking to make sure there's no one lined up over the center. Umpire, after the ball is kicked, you still have all the responsibilities you had in the past. You have to still follow that first wave of players. Normally, 10 yards downfield, when, this, when you're lined up in the defensive backfield, 10 yards downfield and the ball's kicked, you wait until that wave passes, you stand, and you wait until that wave passes you, and then you turn and follow it. With you now in the defensive backfield, you are at a 20-yard disadvantage, 25-yard disadvantage. So once that ball's kicked, you need to move quickly and with urgency to catch up to where you would be normally, having just turned and jogging downfield. You need now 
Now you need to urgently, urgently move downfield and watch that action. Ball's kick, away and you go. Ball's kicked away. You need to hustle downfield because you need to catch up to where you should be. Ball's kicked away, downfield you go. With much urgency, still being able to officiate as you run. Umpire, in this mechanic, you are responsible for the punt shield. We want the referee to watch action on the kicker to know if the ball was tipped and to know if he was roughed. And so that shifts the eyes of the umpire now to the punt shield, whether somebody's coming through over the top of the punt shield, determine if it was in the gap of the punt shield, or determine if there's a foul by the punt shield. Here you have a clear and obvious hold by a uh, player on the punt shield, correctly identified and called as a foul. Nevertheless, you have to throw your flag and still urgently move downfield. A good call to be watching right where you should be watching and then get downfield. Okay, scoring kicks. No change here from how we've been doing it in the past. Just like we identified earlier, umpire, you go, go back to the defensive side of the ball. We tell our officials, all of them, our line of scrimmage officials, our umpire and side judge, that after the ball is kicked, to hustle in quickly with urgency. Players are uh, pushing and shoving, and nothing good can come from uh, exchanges that happen in the middle. So we like our line of scrimmage guys and our umpire and side judge to collapse with urgency. Okay, let's talk a little bit about timeouts. We ask our umpire to stay on the defensive side of the ball with the looking at the referee with the ball between he and the referee. Once the players of both teams are on the field and starting to line up, he can get to where he normally would be in position to hold up the snap. In this case, it's a punt, so he's coming back and now is released. Ball mechanics. mechanics. Let's point out where the ball persons are in this formation. Right back here in the orange shirt, and then over here on this sideline in the orange shirt, you'll notice the ball people are in the offensive backfield, a minimum of five yards deep. They can be deeper if they want. We ask them to pretty much parallel the depth of the umpire or perhaps half the distance to the referee from the line of scrimmage. We want them in the offensive backfield. The other, the other ball person is approximately 10 to 15 yards downfield. As a general rule, the ball, if we're getting a new ball, meaning it's outside the numbers, if we're getting a new ball, the ball comes in from the refer to the referee or to the umpire from the ball person in the offensive backfield on that side of the ball. On this first play, we're going to watch the uh, quarterback. It's a broken play. Quarterback has to scramble to the referee's side, throws a deep pass down his sideline, it's incomplete. But the referee, because he was following the quarterback, turns and uh, gets the ball from the ball person right there in front of him on the offensive side of the ball. See the toss there from the ball person to the referee, referee to the umpire. Umpire knows where the prior position of the ball was and spots the ball. Deep officials are deep, don't have to come up. Line of scrimmage people can still officiate. They've moved downfield. Uh, referee is holding up. We have substitutions, which was told to him. Let's go back here. Let's watch it come on the field. You'll notice that when the substitutes come on, the referee's not even looking at him. That's because the deep wing officials can let him know, or excuse me, the sideline officials can let him know there's a substitution via the O2O. He counts as three seconds and then releases the umpire. This time I have a sweep to the umpire side of the field, goes into the bench area, visiting team. Umpire goes in with him, as does the deep wing. Umpire comes out and gets the ball from the ball person right there in the offensive side of the ball, throws it to the ref referee who spots. Now, not all referees, we're not asking our referees to always spot that. If you had a referee that did not want to spot or it was too quick of a hurry up offense, umpire could quickly just go there and spot the ball and be in position to hold up the snap. Here we don't have a real hurry up offense. It's, in fact, it's a slower huddle offense. 
So it's okay. And our referee wanted to get engaged in it. So he spotted the ball. But say this was a hurry up offense, you can see how it would be just as quick for the umpire. He's going to have to hold up the snap anyway to get the ball, come in, place it, and then stand right there and hold up the snap. So that's that's to your discretion how you want to do that. But the point is the ball came in from the offensive side of the ball. This is just a basic play where it's over the middle. There's no change of uh, new ball, and it just illustrates that the umpire who has to hold up the snap and spot the ball needs to get up the field quickly, which he does in this case. You'll also notice the back judge coming up. We ask our back judges to collapse more, to be involved around player action in the middle. If this was a long pass, uh, say, 40, 50 yards downfield, and it happened at the feet of the ump of the back judge, we have no problem with the back judge taking five or six steps or five yards come up, separate the players, and spot the ball on the ground right there, and then wait till the umpire comes up to stand over the ball. This is a play that just goes up the middle. It's very tight to a first down. I think the line of scrimmage officials do a great job of pinching in tight on this because it's a tight ruling. I like the umpire coming in and I like the referee coming in. On plays of this nature, umpire's coming in hard because he has to spot the ball and break up players. Referee's coming in hard because it's a re uh, quarterback running the ball and referee has a primary with the quarterback. So this just illustrates that action that can happen after the play, if we all collapse in, we can still manage players in a good tight group. Penalty enforcement, I want to illustrate here how the referee and the umpire do not communicate. We want our umpires to know what the foul is, know what the penalty is, and be enforcing that without even having a conversation with the referee. Get the ball. He's overhearing the conversation. Here's what it is. Getting the ball. Waiting for the headline judge to, walk, to mark off the penalty with him. They're looking while the referee's making the announcement. Ball is down. By the time that referee's done with his announcement, we should be ready to go. Okay, that's it for now. Um, feel free to contact me if you have questions, need information. We did a thorough several page mechanics document we've put together. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know and I can um, help you out with it. Keep in mind, this is not to undermine eight person mechanics. This is to prepare us for eight person mechanics, learn the center judge position, and when the finances allow it, we can move our eighth official into the umpire position.